How many times have you tried to sleep in a tent and you got no sleep? You thought you were prepared to be comfortable and maybe you were comfortable, but you still didn't get sleep. Maybe it was the noises, maybe your back hurt, maybe it was just anything else, but you got the worst night sleep of your life. My name is Dan and we're gonna walk through my ultimate guide of how I sleep well in a tent every single time I go backpacking. Okay, not every single time, but pretty close. Okay, first of all, this whole uh, what I do is actually pretty simple, but it makes an enormous difference. You just don't think about it if you don't do this all the time. So the first thing that I do is I ask myself, what is the day leading up to camp going to look like? Are you car camping? Are you backpacking? Are you hiking far to get to where you're gonna sleep? What is the weather gonna be like? So why is that important? Well, I, think it's easier for me to sleep well the first night I go out anywhere camping or backpacking if I'm already tired when I get to camp. It just works well for me. Like if I got a bad night's sleep the night before, say I slept at a hotel that night because I traveled to go where I'm about to camp, but it's actually not a bad thing. I'm actually like, okay, good. Because now when I get to camp, it'll help me sleep in my tent. If I'm hiking a long distance to get to my campsite, that's helpful for me because I'm kind of exhausted, right? I'm like, man, I'm like ready to crash. And if I'm backpacking to get to camp, which is probably most of you watching this video, is my backpack super heavy? Like, is it gonna wear me out? Now, I'm not, I'm not don't get me wrong, I'm not saying like <laughs> you should carry a, a heavy backpack, but that's those are just questions that you should be asking yourselves. So if it's a lightweight backpack, you probably should be asking yourself one of the questions that we're gonna get to later, um, and we'll get to that in a minute. And the other question you should be asking yourself is what's the weather gonna be like? Obviously, if it's gonna be storming that night, or high winds that night, or really hot that night, or um, maybe you are sleeping in a winter snowstorm, those are all things that are gonna affect your sleep. So one thing that I do to plan my trips and make sure that I know what's going on is I look at an app on my phone called Onyx Backcountry. I'm gonna keep talking about this until you guys buy it. Um, and I, you can look at everything from like picking out your trail, but you can also check like snow reports. So. Uh, these are from Snowtel Towers. Those are actual towers. Like if you see a snowflake here, that's the actual uh, tower that's pulling up data for the weather. And it tells you everything that you want to know real time. This was picked up today at 10 o'clock. So uh, that was two and a half hours ago the day when it was last reported. So it shows snow depth, temperature, all kinds of stuff. So it's just a really helpful app. I'll put a link in the description for this app so you can check that out. So all of those things help me in my uh, sort of like mental state of getting ready. <laughs> Looking at my mental state can be interesting, but helping me get ready to get to camp and understand better of how I'm going to sleep that night and sort of mentally prepping myself for it. Another thing I always ask myself is what is the camp situation gonna be like? So uh, this is easier done when you get to camp, but you can sort of prepare in uh, setting up the trip of kind of making sure that your camp is gonna be at least decent. And you can do that on that app because it'll actually show you like actual campsites. But what you do is when you get to camp, you wanna sort of look around and do the obvious, right? Well, maybe it's not obvious to a lot of people, but you wanna make sure that the ground you're picking is flat, it's level, it's free of debris, and it's not in a location that water is gonna kinda flow through if it ends up raining, or it's not gonna come underneath you while you're sleeping, and that's gonna be miserable at night. But that's gonna assure that at least you're laying like you would be while you're sleeping in your bed at home. And then, obviously, if you're sleeping with other people, like in other tents, or maybe there's somebody in the tent with you, find out ahead of time, like, Bro, do you snore? <laughs> like, what kind of a sleeper are you? Are you the type of person that's gonna wake up, wake up like on the hour, every hour to get up and go to the bathroom? Are you guys the type of people that are gonna have a massive meal right before bed and your stomach's gonna hurt all night long? So assess the camp situation. All of this matters in how you're gonna sleep at night because a lot of times when we go camping, we wake up and we didn't sleep good, we think, that it was just like the tent, right? Or it was 
um, the, the sleeping pad or whatever, when it could have been a million other things that led up to that moment that you weren't ready for, that you didn't think through ahead of time that actually helped made you sleep like really bad. Whoa. <laughs> Huh? I know what you're thinking. Dan, that was pretty stupid. <laughs> okay, look at this thing. This is probably the coolest new gadget ever. It's a lantern, and this is your gas canister right here. So like, it doubles as like your stove canisters. You don't need to bring two of them, but it's just a little lantern. I was in uh, Utah in 51 inches of snow with my buddy Devin just very recently, video coming soon. And we could not find firewood, obviously, because it was buried under all the snow. So Devin brought this with him, and it was like the perfect ambient lighting for a fire. It was just absolutely, I think I, I'm, I'm worried it's going to burn my mic. <laughs> my, my mic's right, literally right here. <laughs> Let me move forward. It was the perfect ambient flame for a fire. Or if you're not allowed to have a fire... This is really nice, and it sort of takes away the uh, LED factor. You don't have to have some weird LED. I'll leave a link in the description. It's by a company called Fire Maple. It's kind of fun. I still got the hair on my hands, though. That's good. The next thing is that I always make sure that I planned out my gear to match the trip that I'm going on. Okay, that seems like, a, like an obvious thing to do. But if you're new, you don't know what to pick out, right? You don't, you think you know what you're gonna buy and what you're gonna use when you're sleeping in your tent. But when you get there, you're like, oh man, this is, this is not gonna work. For instance, think about how you sleep at home. Are you the type of person that likes to sleep with your covers tucked in under your mattress? So you're like, you know, secured to the bed and you can hardly move? Or are you the type of person that like, when you go to a hotel, the first thing you do is you pull out the sheets from the corners of the bed because you already know you do not want to be constricted. You're like rolling around all night and flopping around and you're throwing sheets everywhere and all that stuff. And you're the double pillow guy like me. I love having two pillows. If you went out and bought a mummy bag for your backpacking trip, a mummy bag is designed for you to lay in it on your back with your head obviously facing up. <laughs> if you're on your back, I hope, I hope your head's facing up. <laughs> if not, you've got some problems. And it's also designed to kind of have your arms down at the side. And love it or hate it, mummy bags are designed for one type of person, and that's literally it. And so if you're not going to sleep like that at night, then you may want to consider an alternative option uh, because you're going to feel constricted and you're going to feel really uncomfortable. You're probably going to feel claustrophobic unless you bought a mummy bag that's like oversized that at least you can kind of move around in. But you may want to get a backpacking quilt, which is essentially a blanket that goes over the top of you. It's like a minimalist sleeping bag. It's just a, a sleeping bag that doesn't have a back on it. So uh, it's got a, like a foot box. You put your feet inside of a sleeping bag down by your feet, but the rest of it sort of lays over the top of you and then it straps around the sleeping pad to hold it in place so you can kind of move. It's a little bit more freeing, but some people find that it's a learned experience to sleep in because the sides can pull up and drafts can come in if you're not careful. So if you move around a ton, it might not be the best for you. And then think about it from a home perspective, like um, how hot of a sleeper are you? How cold of a sleeper are you? Did you buy a sleeping bag for your trip that is rated properly? Like if the bag says that it's rated to 20 degrees, it's probably not going to keep you warm at 20 degrees. It's going to keep you safe at 20 degrees. So it's probably really only going to keep you uh, warm to like maybe 30, 35 degrees, at least most sleeping bags that are out there. Um, is your sleeping pad warm? Is it comfortable? Is it an air pad? Is it a um, foam pad? If it's um, not rated properly and they're rated by what's called R value, that's just a way to tell you how warm the pad is gonna keep you and the higher the number on the pad, the warmer you'll be. So like, I like pads that are at least rated like an R value of three, three and a half, because I know that I can use those kind of into the fringe seasons. They'll keep me warm and insulated from the ground because that's a big part of keeping you uh, asleep at night is not being cold. You may have a really, really good sleeping bag that's 
properly rated for your trip, but if your sleeping pad is cold, you're gonna freeze and you'll be up all night. What I came to learn about my entire sleeping uh, system was it needs to be as close to home. In other words, what I do at home as far as not feeling constricted or how many pillows do I like or uh, how comfortable am I in warm or hot temperatures and what kind of a mattress do I like and that kind of thing. How can I mimic that out on trail to make me sleep like I'm at home so that way when I get out there, there's not that huge adjustment when I get outside and I'm in a tent from leaving my house. Earlier, I mentioned about the weight of your backpack. Um, if you are carrying a lightweight backpack, make sure that the gear in it is actually gonna keep you warm. Because sometimes we could take too little of stuff out there because we're so concerned about our hike that we are willing to sacrifice when we get to camp. And then in the middle of the night, we are regretting it a whole lot and you get really bad sleep. And the next day, you just have a terrible day. You can't hike and it's just gonna ruin your trip. So. Make sure that your gear is at least gonna keep you warm, safe, and comfortable. And the last thing that I sort of assess and I remind myself is, what is my expectation of sleep when I'm in a tent? I mean, really. Emmett makes fun of me all the time for my bougie setups, um, but I know what he brought for his bougie setup. So you're not gonna believe this. Oh, hey, what's up, dude? What are you doing? Just, uh, just relaxing here after a long day hiking. I want to your bougie pillow. Oh, you mean this one, the Dick Sporting Goods pillow? No, not that oh. one. The one that's under your oh, this guy? What is that? Uh, this is the purple pillow. The purple pillow? Like the purple pillow that gets shipped to your house for your actual bedroom in your house. Correct. Is what we're Correct. Right now. <sighs> I was going to fire you. You're getting a pass, though. You're getting a pass this time. Because that is a pretty cool pillow. I'm not going to lie. I look at that and I say, I really would like to sleep really good throughout the night. And then I lower my expectations. Because if you go to camp expecting to sleep perfectly all night long and uh, wake up just so refreshed, like it was the greatest night sleep of your life, you are fooling yourself. Now look, there are the rare few of you out there that are able to do that and you probably sleep better outside than in your house. Okay, that's, that's great. We are so proud of you. But for the rest of us, lowering your expectations will give you a better result of the emotional excitement to actually sleep in a tent because you're not frustrated, you're not angry, you didn't get good sleep, you sort of expected you weren't gonna sleep as good, so at least you're not like mentally upset the next day and you're not horribly uh, frustrated and you're willing now to camp again and backpack again and make it sort of a routine. Also think of it like this, if you don't sleep good at home already right now, <laughs> chances are you're probably not gonna sleep much better in a tent. <laughs> so your expectation should be at that level. All right, now I've mentioned this uh, a long time ago in a very early video, but I actually sleep with white noise in my tent. And the reason I do that is because I sleep with a fan at my house and I have for like 20 years. So the sound of the fan just helps me sleep, helps my wife sleep. So we turn the fan on, we go to sleep. And if I go out into the back country and there's no fan and it's like dead quiet, I can't sleep. It's really difficult to fall asleep because that um, experience of being at home wasn't with me in the back country. So I, if you didn't know this, there's a white noise setting on your iPhone, if you're iPhone users um, and I'll show you exactly where to get it. So if you're an iPhone user, just go to your settings menu and type in background noise, uh, background sounds, and there it is, background sounds, and you can turn them on. And what do you know? There it is. And then you can actually uh, save that to your control center How somehow, like if you swipe down, you'll be able to see the, it right there, and then you can turn it on this way. Pretty cool. And then I just plug my phone into a uh, battery bank and uh, run it all night long. So look, I totally get it. I have been doing this for a very long time and repetition obviously helps. And my tent has become sort of like a second home for me. It's like um, I get in it and I'm just used to it. But you gotta kind of look at it like, you know, you prepped for the trip, uh, you bought all the right gear, you picked out the right campsite. You gotta remember where you're at. In a tent, in the middle of the woods, 
with scary sounds everywhere. And you may hear a little rustling in the leaves outside and more than likely it's a mouse, uh, it's a chipmunk, <laughs> or it's the wind blowing the leaves. Uh, it's not uh, a Sasquatch, it's not Bigfoot. All right, I hope that helps you guys out. I really truly hope it helps you sleep because when you get out in the backcountry, if you don't have a good night's sleep, it really does ruin your entire trip. <laughs> so, and I don't want it to ruin your trip because I want you to keep going. And if you had a bad experience, maybe now you know why, and hopefully this will encourage you to get back out into the backcountry to try it again. All right, you guys, we'll see you on the next one.